Hello and welcome to JSB Talks Digital, the podcast for marketers, small business owners, and those of you bringing your skills into the digital age. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Digital Training Institute. Coming up in today's show, Instagram releases business profiles, going around in 360 degree circles with Facebook photos, the Periscope button arrives on Twitter for mobile, I speak to Richard Corbridge, IT Person of the Year and CIO of Ireland's National Health Service. My featured column, Social Media Influencers Aren't Born Overnight and LSI Keyword Generator, the social media tool that saved my working week. Social Media News We all know visual and video storytelling and personalisation are the hottest things right now in social media. Ignore this trend, my friends, at your social media peril. Instagram's growth has been phenomenal. They boast 400 million monthly active users with 70 million photos uploaded each day. The introduction of 60-second videos is also drawing more attention to Facebook's sister social network. So, are we really that surprised that to monetize this growth, Instagram have introduced business profiles? I, for one, am not. I haven't gone there just yet. I'm going to hang around regular profiles for a while to see what happens next. Will Instagram's business profiles suffer the same cliff-edge fall that Facebook pages did? Will we have to pay to play for reach? And will we get more functionality to help us promote our business more effectively? I suspect all three of these scenarios may just transpire. I'll be watching Instagram business profiles with great interest. Meanwhile, over at Facebook HQ, they have been snap happy with the introduction of 360 photo for web, iOS and Android. 360 degree photos can be created by capturing a panoramic photo on your smartphone or by snapping a 360 degree photo through a dedicated app or 360 degree camera. You then share the photo through Facebook as you would any other piece of media and here's where the magic happens. The app converts the file into the relevant format for Facebook's news feed. The 360 photos on Facebook are marked by a little compass icon and you can manoeuvre the photo around by tilting your phone, swiping your finger or clicking and dragging with a mouse on desktop. So go find one now. It's an immersive experience and one that we will all no doubt get on board with. So it seems that Twitter is planning to bring their live streaming app Periscope even closer to us as they're now testing the Periscope button for select mobile users. Unfortunately, I don't have this feature yet. So the button appears next to the photo and video buttons when you compose a tweet. So this allows you to easily start a live Periscope broadcast, tweeting it right out from Twitter itself. I can't wait to have this feature. And in fact, I think I would use Periscope a lot more. Interview. In today's show, I'm joined by Richard Corbridge, IT Person of the Year 2016 and CIO of the HSE, Ireland's National Health Service. In 2015, Richard was named the fifth most influential CIO in Europe by CIO magazine. He was listed by Computer Weekly as a rising star of the IT industry and named by the Huffington Post as one of the most social CIOs in the world. Richard, you are very welcome to JSB Talks Digital. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for inviting me. So the HSE is a large organisation of over 100,000 people. Its job is to run all of the public health services in Ireland. So as Chief Information Officer, how did you introduce them to digital reform? I guess what we try to do is, is slowly but surely bring about different ways that digital can impact on the way health is delivered. So literally ranging from how clinicians communicate with each other, how patients can access the systems and services, how the, the service is actually structured, can all be supported by digital. We use the sort of definitions that have come in from Forbes magazine around social, mobile, analytics, cloud, and Internet of Things to start to get people to understand what digital means as well. Because the definition of, of IT in health ranges from connected healthcare through e-health off to digital healthcare, and it, it's quite a broad 
ability that people need to understand. But it's it, it started to impact on the way care is delivered, and that's where people have really begun to understand what digital reform can bring. Now, you've been quoted as saying digital health is the only way the healthcare system of Ireland can be reformed, and the reform has started. But I guess you've been the disruptor, haven't you? You've been trailblazing communications and digital reform in the HSE since your arrival just back in 2014. Thank you very much. We've been trying to. I guess the reason for saying that, that digital health is the only way the healthcare system can reform is very much when we talk about reforming the system. We want the system to be more efficient and safer. The only way to do that is by having integrated care. And the only way you can really achieve integrated care is having what we're terming a digital fabric. You think currently there are 10,000 people in primary care with no IT to support what they do. There are 10,000 people in primary care that are delivering care with pens and paper. You can't integrate the healthcare journey if it's pens and paper very easily. So I recently wrote a guest blog post for you on why staff should go front of screen on social media. And I know from my own training business that staff are actually very reluctant in many cases to do this in case they make a mistake and get called out in it by management. How have you been approaching this type of fear? We've been trying really hard to empower staff, very much saying, Let, let's see how this works. Let's make mistakes, but let's recover from the mistakes quickly. I think what we've tried to do is empower people to, you know, it's one of the first things we did was how do we change the way we use IT security? One of the things that first happened in, in the January of my first year was I went to a large presentation and a clinician put their hand up at the end and said, there's one thing that IT can do for me. He said, currently, if I'm, I'm, he was a breast cancer surgeon. He said, if I put the word breast into my computer, my computer stops working and security come to ask me what I'm Googling the word breast for. This is a breast cancer surgeon. We've had to change completely people's outlook of, of what they're allowed to do with technology and stop technology security being a replacement for best practice and understanding and really change the way people consider how and what they can do. And social media has been a big part of that, allowing and enthusing people to get involved, to use social media to be, make connections, to, to build up the networks that exist. And I know we've had this conversation previously about, you know, my work in the whole policing sphere. But if I'm in New York, I can tweet my local officer. If I'm in the West Midlands in the UK, I can Snapchat my local Bobby. When will I be able to communicate with doctors, nurses, physicians on social media in Ireland? Are we, the public, is the HSC or the medical profession ready for such a move? I don't think it is ready for such a move. Not for a patient to get in touch and start talking about the personal issues live on social media. I think one of the things we have done with clinicians is explain to them how social media can be used to have a conversation with patients and the public, but how conversations need to be taken off social media as soon as it starts to become about the personal health of the person talking to them. I think one of the things that social media has done around clinicians is allow that networked connectivity to be created, so special interest groups to start to share help and support stories as opposed to physically asking for advice and guidance from a clinician. I think we're seeing more and more hospitals are starting to move to having hospital-wide um, Twitter capability and things like that so they can start to react to questions. But we're always really strongly saying take things offline as soon as it becomes about personal health care. Good advice. What's your own vision for digital health care in Ireland by 2020? 2020 is a good, a good sort of period of time. What we've always said is this is a, a long journey. We are looking at an electronic health record for Ireland. Our business case has been approved by the HSC and is now with um, the Department of Health and Government. What we'd like to have in place is, is what we've termed and what I've mentioned before is the, this digital fabric so that care is provided in an integrated way so that patients can see what is recorded about them and add to what is recorded about them. And patients really most importantly can see who's looking at information about them something that no other country has really been able to do yet is remove the privacy concerns. And we think one of the ways of doing that in Ireland is to say, okay, you will now be able to look at your health record. And when you do that, you'll be able to see which clinicians have also looked at your health record. So it empowers the citizen of Ireland so much more. I'm sure other public bodies and large organisations are looking at what you're doing with the HSE. Richard, what three tips would you give anybody trying to implement digital reform in a large organisation? Transparency and openness, absolutely. Let's, let's get the message out there that people can really be enthused and understand what you're doing as long as you are really clear in what the messages are that you're doing. And we've taken that on within eHealth Island and the HSE to be as open and transparent, publishing things like our business case, being clear with the media, 
with citizens of Ireland of, of the cost of doing this and making it clear how that can be done. I think they're two of the three things that we really have pushed to do. But also there's an element of, of being able to take people on a journey. IT in public sector is often a big program. What we mustn't do is say we're going to go away and in nine years we'll come back and we'll deliver everything. Every year we have to deliver something new. So in 2016, the major project to deliver was electronic referrals so that in a GP practice you would have, an, as a patient, be able to see that your referral has landed in the hospital. We finished the last hospital two weeks ago, and now that's a, a solution that's available across the whole of Ireland. Wow, fantastic. Congratulations. And thank you so much for joining me today, Richard. If you want to find out more about Richard's work, do follow him on Twitter at Richard Atron, and that's or one C H A R D A T R O N, or connect with Richard Corbridge on LinkedIn. Thanks very much. Thank you. Shoutouts. In this part of the show, I give shout outs to those who are remarkable online and worth talking about. Today, my shout outs go to six companies who are helping marketers be remarkable online. My debut article on socialmediaexaminer.com has been published and I featured six video tools to ignite your social marketing. These are tools I use in my business and in my training programs. So I've decided to give them all a big shout out in today's show. Firstly, Animoto, which will help you create video compilations. We have Legend to create custom GIFs. Relay for Snapchat video geo filters. Overvideo, which allows you to add a soundtrack to your video. Cinemagraph Pro for Facebook profile GIFs. And finally, Go Animate for video presentations and training tutorials. If you want to find out how to use each of these video storytelling tools, log on to socialmediaexaminer.com forward slash six video tools to ignite your social marketing. And let me know what you think. Send me a tweet at tweets by JSB. And I'd like to give a big shout out to everyone at socialmediaexaminer.com who give me the opportunity to write for their website. JSB's column. Social media influencers aren't born overnight. It seems everyone wants to be a social influencer, including me. We all want a piece of the social media gravy train of influence and we are all hopping on for the ride. So it got me thinking, what is a social media influencer and are they born overnight? Well, the simple answer to the second question is no. So what is a social media influencer? My definition is, a person who has knowledge, skills and experience in social media and who communicates that intellectual property widely and freely. Their profile is raised due to their ability to share knowledge rapidly on the social web. They are likely writers, speakers, authors, broadcasters, podcasters and presenters on the topic of social media or a niche area within it. I had the opportunity to meet and speak with quite a number of social media influencers at Social Media Marketing World in San Diego. But one thing became very apparent to me. These guys haven't hopped on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope Lab or Twitter overnight to become a social star. These guys and gals come with a resume of life, business and career experience that would impress if we actually took the time to read more about them and their story. You see, it all feels too easy sometimes to, one, make it online overnight, two, to make assumptions about those who are leading lights in the industry, but three, it's the stages that they grace and the news or industry websites that they feature on that really makes them stand out from the crowded noise of social stardom. So, in my opinion, that's what you should look out for in your social media or digital influencer. Third party recognition coupled with a study of their work and how it has helped you. Only then can you rate a social media influencer. Some of my most favourite hardworking social media influencers are Joel Com of joelcom.com, Michael Stelsner, founder of socialmediaexaminer.com, Ian Cleary, founder of razorsocial.com, Mark Schaefer, multiple author and business consultant at businessgrow.com, 
Brian Fanzo, founder of isocialfans.com and live streaming expert. Carlos Gill, head of social media at BMC Software and Snapchat influencer. Sue B. Zimmerman, the ultimate Instagram influencer. And Steve Dotto of Dotto Tech, and he's king on YouTube. These guys, my friends, put in the work so we all benefit from their knowledge. Finally, this podcaster has been telling stories for 15 years. And if you think I just woke up one morning and decided to be a podcaster because it's the cool thing to do, then you are gravely mistaken. Miss JSB has been on the long road of journalism, PR, CEO in various corporate roles and self-employment. If you want to be an influencer in any area, simply keep working, keep learning, keep sharing and ask others to share your knowledge too. Then my friends, influence will find you. You will not find it. Social media of the week. Software as a service is a vital part of my business. I use technology to make my business more efficient, more accountable, and it helps me scale. The same should be true of your social media and digital marketing strategy. So the tool that saved my working week is the LSI Keyword Generator. I was undertaking research for a client content strategy, and I used this tool to find specific long tail search terms. The LSI Keyword Generator operates on latent semantic indexing keywords, just as the Google algorithm does. So as you can imagine, it's great for all your SEO needs. How does it work? Well, LSI keywords better match up content with the intent of users' queries in search engines. Therefore, helping improve the quality of the content that users are provided with by Google, and in turn, improving your page ranking. So, if you have a content marketing strategy that you're working on, go check it out. It's free at lsigraph.com. If you want to learn more about what I've discussed on this episode, log on to digitaltraining.ie and click on podcasts. I'll have links to all of today's stories right there. If you want to learn more from me, join my webinar community at bigmarker.com forward slash digital training institute. You can register for my free monthly webinars on a range of social media and digital marketing topics right there. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget, tweet me at tweets by JSB and add me on Snapchat, JSB Snaps. JSB Talks Digital. Digital.